What's up guys? Welcome to my second vlog post. Now, in my first vlog post, which I published last week, I discussed a bit of writing I've been doing lately in the fantasy genre. Fantasy genre. Now, of course, for those of you who know me, you know that I'm a big history buff. And I believe that in my last vlog, I might have mentioned that historical evidence is a big part of fantasy. Because the truth is often stranger than fiction. For example, George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire is based predominantly on the War of the Roses, which was the English Civil War. And he's stated, actually, that the events of that war were actually more barbaric than the events of his series. Well, that's up for debate. I've looked at both, and they're both pretty disgusting. It can't be denied that the truth can be stranger than the fiction. So naturally, I had to get a lot of historical examples for characters that I've been developing. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna give you the information on the characters themselves just yet. I might not even at all because I don't know whether or not there is people here. There are people here who might be trying to steal stuff like that. But I'm going to give the historical figures that the characters are going to be based upon. So one of them is Oliver Cromwell who was a major player in the War of Three Kingdoms, which occurred in the 17th century between... Actually, I believe it was the 16th century, but don't quote me on either. Anyway, he was the English leader who... Not the king, but the leader. I forget what his exact title was. But he's not remembered very positively in Ireland. He led a lot of campaigns in Ireland that slaughtered thousands of civilians and killed most of the Irish lords. Another character is based on Henry VIII, who was also loathed in Ireland for being the first Anglican king. That's not why he's loathed. He's loathed because he made Anglicans superior to Catholics, and the Irish, as most of you probably know, had no desire to, sub to change their religion. Henry VIII was the one who had his wife killed because she couldn't have a son. Another one is Ivan the Terrible, who was the first Russian Tsar who expanded his reach beyond Muscovy, which is the capital of which is now Moscow. He was, for all intents and purposes, crazy as heck. He had quite a few mental illnesses and a very twisted childhood. Another one is William Wallace. Now, this is not the Mel Gibson William Wallace who was fighting to avenge his true love. This is the real William Wallace who had the skin of one of his dead enemies flayed off and made into a sword belt. William Wallace was not the nicest guy and he was not one to stop at any, anything, really. Another one is Richard, another character is based on Richard the Lionheart who was the crusading king of England, was killed on campaign but remembered as a good king, even though he didn't spend much time actually sitting on the throne. He spent most of his time in the Middle East fighting the Saracens. And of course, since we have Richard the Lionheart, we have his little brother, John, who was made famous by the Robin Hood legend and the one who was forced to sign the Magna Carta. But that's not the aspect that the character I'm basing off of him is going to be portraying. Another one is the another character is based on the Roman Emperor Trajan. Their name is actually a Celticized version of the name Trajan. And Trajan was the military conqueror of Dacia, which is modern day Romania, and the predecessor of Hadrian, who built Hadrian's Wall in Britain. Another character is based on Julius Caesar, who if I have to explain Caesar to you, I don't think I want you on this post. Anyway, moving on. Another character is based largely on the Brian Baru, who was the first Irish high king who drove out the Norse. Despite what the BBC will tell you, they're lying. Uh, of course, I have to have a World War II character, so I have a character based off of Hitler. Not completely based off of Hitler, because if there's one guy who's going... <laughs> I can't exactly have that, because everybody would recognize it. And that was not me being a Nazi. That was me going maybe a bit too far with the gestures, but I have nothing against any ethnicity 
race, religion, or sexual orientation. I'm just putting that out there. Anyway, for my final one off the list, I have a character based off Charles the Hammer, better known as, also known as Charles Martel, who was the grandfather father of Charlemagne, and stopped the Persian, I don't know if it was Persian, but it wasn't Persian, it was Arab. He stopped the Arab inv invasion of Europe at the Battle of Tour Poitiers. So, of course, it's not just characters. I have a lot of historical events that are coming into play, but I haven't quite figured out all of them just yet, so I only have a few that are set in stone. Probably the first one is the fall of Rome. The story itself takes place in the world after several major empires have fallen, and now ethnic nations are being created out of the ruins, which is kind of what happened after Rome fell in Europe. There were kingdoms of the Franks, kingdoms of the Germans, and Italy itself was basically a mess. And then Britain went to the Anglo-Saxons. I'm ranting, I'm ranting, I apologize. So, it's, since there's a plague that was the cause of the collapse of these empires, I'm also drawing off of what happened in Western Europe after the Black Plague. So there's, but it's not going to be as renaissance as the end of the Black Plague was. It's going to be a lot darker and a lot more militaristic. There's going to be a lot more killing involved. And as I mentioned before, the War of the Three Kingdoms, which were between England, Scotland, and Ireland, are going to figure in pretty prominently in terms of the events that are going to ha happen. And also, going off the William Wallace thing, the real Wars of Scottish Independence, not what you see in Braveheart, are going to figure in pretty prominently as well. So, until next time, this is me signing off. Stay classy. Ron Burgundy.